Today we're going to talk about food chains, food webs, and symbiotic relationships. A food chain shows how the energy in food is passed from one organism to another in an ecosystem. The arrows shown in a food chain indicate the direction of the energy of flow. Food chains begin with radiant energy from the sun. Producers, which are plants, transform the sun's energy into the chemical energy found in food. In an aquatic food chain, phytoplankton can be the producers. There are two types of plankton. There is phytoplankton and zooplankton. Phytoplankton are microscopic plant, one cell plants, and zooplankton are one cell microscopic animals. Both are at the very bottom of the food chain. In this marine chain, they show krill at the bottom, but krill is a very small crustacean, but they would be feeding on the phytoplankton and the zooplankton. Again, phytoplankton are tiny plant-like organisms. They're found in fresh and in marine or salt waters. Like land plants, phytoplankton transform sunlight into energy, or excuse me, sunlight energy into food and supply a large part of oxygen in the atmosphere. Small animal, small animal organisms, again called zooplankton, such as water fleas and copiopods, eat the phytoplankton. Every living thing has a special job or role in the ecosystem. This role is called a niche, which is very similar to a person's occupation. An organism's niche is the way it gets food energy and how it might give energy to others in a food chain or a food web. Producer and consumer relationships are shown in food chains and in food webs. Producers are organisms that produce their own organic compounds, such as glucose, for food. Producers are autotrophs. The most common producers include green plants and algae. Consumers are organisms that cannot make their own food. Heterotroph is another name for a consumer. Examples of consumers include herbivores, carnivores, and omnivores. Herbivores only eat plants and are primary consumers. Carnivores only eat animals and are secondary or tertiary consumers. And omnivores eat both plants and animals. The relationships in food chains or food webs can also be shown using a diagram called an energy pyramid, as we see here. An energy pyramid illustrates the transfer of energy in an ecosystem. The amount of energy that plants capture from the sun is represented by the bottom layer of the pyramid. This is where the most energy is. So what do you notice about the size of the levels as you move up the energy pyramid? As you move up the levels of the energy pyramid, the levels become smaller. Most of the energy in a level is transferred to the environment in other forms, such as heat. In a marine ecosystem, a single mollusk, mollusk needs to eat many phytoplankton to support its daily activities. From one level to the next, 
about 10% of the energy available is transferred to the next level. Large numbers of producers are needed to support just a few top consumers located at the top of the energy pyramid. So again, as you move up the pyramid, only 10% of the energy from the lower level is available to the next level. And we can see that in these examples here. And notice the top level is the tertiary consumers. These are the top of the food chain. And they have the least available energy. That's why there are less tertiary consumers than there are primary consumers. There are several types of relationships that occur when different populations of organisms interact. These relationships occur in all ecosystems, including freshwater, marine or saltwater, and terrestrial ecosystems. The first we want to talk about is the producer and consumer relationship. Producers make the food needed for consumers to survive. Remember that producers are the plants. Producers transform energy from the sun into glucose and oxygen in a process known as photosynthesis. The consumer uses this chemical energy and transforms it into other types of energy needed by the consumer. Predator-prey interactions occur when a predator captures and eats prey. This relationship helps keep the number of animals in an ecosystem balanced. As the number of prey animals increase, so does the number of predators. As the number of prey animals declines due to predation, disease, or other factors, the number of predators also declines. In many cases, the weaker organisms of a population become the prey, thereby strengthening the population's genetic traits for future animals to survive. Some organisms are both predator and prey. Now let's talk about symbiotic relationships. A symbiotic relationship is when two organisms of different species, they can be two different plant species, two different animal species, or a plant and an animal species. But when two different species interact in a long-term relationship, it's called symbiosis. There are several types of symbiotic relationships. In these relationships, at least one organism benefits from the relationship. While the other organisms may benefit, they may be harmed, or they not, may not be affected at all. So there are three basic types of symbiotic relationships. The first type of symbiotic relationship is called mutualism. In a mutualistic relationship, both species benefit from the relationship. We see three pictures here. We see a picture of a clownfish and an anemone. In this relationship, the clownfish gets a home, is protected, and so as well as the anemone protected uh, from other predators that the clownfish may run off uh, from its home. Here we have a bird and a water buffalo. Well, the bird gets, is benefited by receiving food from eating parasites off of the, uh, uh, the water buffalo, and the water buffalo gets a good cleaning from it. And the same is true here with the crocodile and the bird. The bird gets food from the crocodile's mouth. The crocodile gets a good, a good dental cleaning. Those are just three types of mutualistic relationships. There are many others. Can you think of any? 
The second type of symbiotic relationship is called commensalism. In a commensal relationship, one species benefits, while the other species doesn't benefit, but is not harmed either. We see three pictures here. One type of commensal relationship is a bird building a nest in a tree. The bird gets a home. The tree is neither harmed nor is it benefited from the bird living there. Another, here we see Spanish moss growing in a tree. Again, the Spanish moss gets a, gets a place to grow and generally does not affect the growth or does it harm the tree in any way, but the tree does not receive a benefit from it either. And here we have a mussel with barnacles growing on it. Again, the barnacle is getting a home, a place to attach, and the mussel is, is not harmed from the relationship, but it does not receive uh, any benefits from the relationship either. Again, can you think of any commensal relationships? The third type of symbiotic relationship is parasitism. And parasitism, one of the organisms benefits from the relationship while the other is harmed. Uh, a couple of examples here. We have, if you notice, we have uh, six eggs in a bird's nest. Notice that one of the eggs is not the same as the others. That's because another bird came along, laid its nest, laid its egg in, a, in another species of bird's nest, and the mother bird of, of these five will sit on the eggs, and this one will hatch. Notice here, look at the size of this baby bird being fed by this mother bird. Obviously not the same species. So this is a type of parasitism. Another one that you're familiar with, here's a tick that is buried into an animal. Uh, the tick is benefiting from the relationship while the animal is harmed in the relationship. And of course, all of you can relate to this one, the mosquito biting a, a human or any type of animal. The, the uh, mosquito getting food, but the, uh, the individual that's being bit is being harmed and could possibly uh, get disease from certain types of mosquitoes. So these are all types of parasitism, and I'm sure that you can think of some other parasites and parasitic relationships. So let's do a quick review. Remember that in a food chain or in a food web or food pyramid that the energy always flows in the direction that the arrow is pointing. That at the bottom of a food chain or food web we will have the producers which are the plants. That at each level of a food pyramid, only about 10% of the energy is available from the previous or, or layer below, and that <clears throat> that the uh, producers are consumed by the primary consumers, and that the primary consumers are consumed by secondary consumers and at the top of the food web or food chain we have the tertiary consumers. Also remember that we have several different types of relationships. We have the producer-consumer relationship. We have the predator-prey relationship. And then we have three types of symbiotic relationships. Mutualism, where both of the species benefit from the relationship. Commensalism, where one of the species benefits while the other is not harmed. And then parasitism, where we have one of the species benefits and one of the species is 
harmed in the relationship. 